Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. I'm Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to do a summary of exercise 3, which involves heat fixing and the subsequent gram stain reaction. Okay, so in order to do a gram stain, which is a very important test on bacteria, we have to first transfer bacteria onto a microscope slide, which remember those are in your drawers, and then we have to heat fix those slides. And I've got, I have a diagram up here that shows you what to do if the stock culture that you're taking the bacteria from is liquid media versus solid media. All right, so let's look at this. So let's assume our stock culture of bacteria is a broth. So it's a liquid already. This is actually the simpler case. All we do is we aseptically transfer, using the inoculant loop, this stock culture, some of it, onto the microscope slide. And again, there will be more details in your lab manual, but this is basically what we do. Now, we don't actually have to add any water to this because it comes from something that's already a fluid. This is already a liquid medium. So, we just put it on there, and we smear it around kind of in the center of the microscope slide, and then we just set it to air dry. Okay? You never heat fix a wet slide. So, what you're going to do is you're just going to swab the bacteria using the inoculating loop onto your slide and just basically let it sit for a little bit, okay? The other case is if the stock culture is from a plate, so it's solid media. In this case, you actually have to add a few drop, maybe a couple drops of water to the slide before you do anything else. Because it's coming from solid media, it needs to be wet at first. So you have to add a little bit of water to that, maybe a couple drops, and then you're going to aseptically use your inoculating loop to pick up some of the bacteria from the plate, and you're basically going to smear it onto that drop of water, and again, it's going to be wet at first, obviously, because you put water on there, and then again, you're going to let it sit out for a little bit and air dry. Okay, and in both of these cases, either when it's a liquid media or solid media, you have to let it air dry you never heat fix wet slides. Now, you let it sit, let it dry, and once it's dry, you're allowed to heat fix. So for this, you need to light your touch matic burners, as we did in, in day one, and what you're gonna do is you're going to move the slide over the peak of the flame. So back and forth, it doesn't have to be for long, uh, maybe like five or six strokes over it, um, you really don't want to put it through the center of the flame. Um, it can sort of touch the top of it, but it doesn't need to be, it really doesn't need to go into the flame much. Just over the top of it about five or six times, and that heat fixes the bacteria on the slide. Okay, so when you're heat fixing, what you're doing is you're killing the bacteria. So you're putting it over a flame with a very high temperature. That amount of heat is going to kill the bacteria, but also what it does is it immobilizes the bacteria. Okay, so if they're dead, they, they don't move. But also, there's one other thing we have to consider. What we're going to be doing after the heat fixing is a gram stain. And we're going to be adding stains to these cells. And since we've heated them, we've sort of damaged their structural integrity. And that damage allows the stains to get into the cells because we really want the stains to get in. Otherwise, they won't work. So heat fixing is a very important step for those three reasons. Okay. Once we've heat fixed, we're going to do the gram stain. But before we talk about the actual stain itself, we need to discuss different types of bacteria and their structures. Okay, so on the right here, I don't know why they actually have this on the right, but this is gram positive bacteria, and this is a schematic of gram negative bacteria. Now, we obviously have a cell, but the superficial, the outer part of that cell, the outermost layer, is a protective cell wall. Okay, and the cell wall contains this purple polymer right here, peptidoglycan. It's present in both of these. Now, if we look at gram-positive bacteria, we notice there's a cytoplasmic membrane, and superficial to that in gram-positive bacteria, we have a very thick layer of peptidoglycan. Okay, notice how it's much thicker in gram-positive than it is over here in gram-negative. All right, so this is kind of the general structure of a gram-positive bacteria. In gram-negative, notice that the peptidoglycan layer is very thin, and they also have an outer membrane um, 
outside of the peptidoglycan layer. So that's some interesting things. So first of all, in gram-negative bacteria, we have two layers, two membranes, right? So it's a double membrane cell. And in gram-positive bacteria, it's only a single plasma membrane. But the main thing to take away from this is in gram-positive bacteria, the peptidoglycan layer is extremely thick, whereas in gram-negative bacteria, it's thin. The gram stain differentiates gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria based on the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer. It has nothing to do with the number of membranes. That's actually something that confuses a lot of students. It confused me when I first learned it. It has nothing to do with the number of membranes. It's only a function of the thickness of that peptidoglycan layer. Okay, so that's the main thing you need to understand. All right. Now, let's actually go over the gram stain procedure and talk about how this relates to the structure. All right, so presumably we've already heat fixed the cells. The first step in the gram stain is we're going to flood them with a primary stain called crystal violet. Now, what is a primary stain? Well, if I have a cell that stains the color of the primary stain, that cell has the structure of interest. What's the structure of interest here? It's a thick peptidoglycan layer. That's what we're looking for, a thick peptidoglycan layer. So in the end, you'll notice here only one of these is violet or purple. It's over here gram positive. So that means gram positive, because they stain the color of the primary stain, they have that structure, meaning these gram positive bacteria over here on the left have that thick peptidoglycan layer. So that's what a primary stain is. If we were to put this in perspective of something analogous in the class, if I had a stain that, let's say it was blue, and it was a stain specific for detecting nursing majors. Let's say we had nursing majors and kinesiology majors, right? So if I stained everybody with that primary stain, only at the end the nursing majors would be blue. The kinesiology majors might be something else. Maybe they'd be red or something, okay? So the primary stain, if a cell stains that color, it has the structure of interest. And the primary stain is crystal violet, okay? And after the first step, everything's violet. After we add the crystal violet, we're going to treat with Graham's iodine. Okay, so Graham's iodine is a special kind of iodine. And what it does is, is it gets into the peptoglycan also, and it causes the crystal violet to crystallize and form crystals. So... Let's think about this for a second. Let's think of these two situations. So we've got a really thick layer right here, really thin over here in gram negative. Let's imagine we have two swimming pools side by side. One pool over here, one pool over here. Let's say the pool over here on the left with the gram negative, that pool's filled with water, just a normal swimming pool. Over here on the right with the gram positive, let's say we've got a swimming pool filled with quicksand, okay? Let's suppose you have two people and they jump into each pool. So one person jumps into this pool, one person jumps into this one. Which pool are they going to have an easier time getting out of? Well, obviously, the person who's in the, in the water pool is going to be much more thankful because they're going to have a much easier time getting out of this pool. Whereas if the person falls into the quicksand pool, they hopefully will be able to get out, but they'll have a much harder time. If the person jumping in represents the crystal violet, that's kind of what happens. So the iodine actually causes the crystal violet to crystallize within the peptidoglycan, but then we're going to decolorize. And this is where that analogy comes to play. The decolorization is the critical step in the gram stain procedure. A critical step is really just a step where you want to make sure you get it right because it's the step associated with the most error. So the decolorization, decolorizer is normally an alcohol mixture, but you apply it to all the cells, and if the cells are gram positive, the crystal violet is retained, but if the cells are gram negative, the crystal violet is washed out and they're colorless. Why is that? Well, if we think of the gram negative bacteria as being that swimming pool that's full of water, and the person jumping in is the crystal violet, that crystal violet's gonna have a much easier time getting out of this because this layer's so thin. Likewise, the person's gonna have a much easier time getting out of the swimming pool full of water because it's water, it's not very thick, right? 
In the case of the gram-positive bacteria, they retain the crystal violet even after decolorization because the crystal violet is, is much more solidified in this layer of peptoglycan because it's so thick. It's kind of like it's going to be much harder for the person to get out of the quicksand because the quicksand is so thick and viscous, right? So hopefully that analogy makes a little bit of sense. Now, if you just looked at the cells right here, you'd be able to see the gram-positive, they'd be purple. But if there were gram-negative bacteria there, you wouldn't be able to see anything because they're clear. So we want to make sure we can visualize also the gram-negative, so we counter-stain with something called safranin. And the counter-stain is really just a stain that's used so you can see any structure that's had the primary stain washed out. So, counter-stain with safranin, and that's a pinkish-red color, and gram-negative now appear pink. Now, the gram-positive also absorbed the safranin, but the crystal violet is so bold, you just can't see the safranin. So in the end, gram-positive bacteria appear purple or violet, and gram-negative bacteria appear reddish-pink, okay? Now, do you need to understand really all the theory behind everything here? No, I would say the main thing that you need to understand is what is the primary stain? Crystal violet. What is the counter stain? Safranin. What is the critical step? Decolorization and then be able to interpret the results. In any case, here's the results. This is an, these are actual micrograph images of gram stains. Over on the left here, this is a gram negative stain. So these are bacteria that are gram negative and notice they're reddish pink. Okay, it's a pretty easy test to differentiate. Over here on the right, we have gram-positive bacteria. Again, they are obviously much darker, purple, violet, and so you would know these are gram-positive. Okay, remember, gram-positive are purple because they are being represented by the crystal violet primary stain. Gram-negative bacteria are pinkish red because they got the crystal violet washed out and only have safranin left, okay? So let's do a practice example of what you might see on a quiz or an exam. So let's figure out what type of gram reaction bacteria A and B had. What about A? Well, A is clearly purple-violet, so A is going to be a gram-positive bacteria, okay? B is reddish-pink, more, much more on the pink side, so we know that bacteria B is gram-negative. Now, here's a follow-up question that is very likely to be on an exam. What they'll often ask is, it'll be a two-part question. You'll see a slide like this. It won't have both of these. It'll just have one or the other. But it'll say, what is the gram reaction? Or interpret the gram reaction. You either need to say gram negative or gram positive. That's part A. Part B will say, what is the shape of the bacteria? Remember, we covered that in exercise two. So what's the shape of bacteria A? Well, to me, these look circular, so these are going to be cocci. And what about B? What's the shape of these bacteria? Well, they look more rod-like, so B is going to be bacilli, okay? So hopefully this gave you some intuition on heat fixation, or heat fixing, excuse me, and the gram stain, and being able to interpret the results. Um, that's pretty much all there is for this lab in terms of what can be on the exam. Pretty much you need to be able to know what the stains are, primary and counter stain, know the critical step, and then also being able to interpret the results and shapes of cells. Okay, so um, that's it for exercise three. Next day, we'll do exercise four. Thank you.